Well, I hope you have enjoyed uh, the video series on spiritual disciplines, life practices, life formation, spiritual formation, whatever moniker you want to use. But these living disciplines, the disciplines I've talked about in these videos, prayer, reading, fasting, they're important because they characterized the life of Jesus Christ. And in the same way, they have to characterize our lives as well. Every single year, millions of people make confessions of faith, but there's a problem. The habits of their life are appreciably the same after conversion as they were before conversion. Why is that? It's because of the accumulated deposits of life experiences that remain entrenched in our embodied selves. So we have a desire to do what is good, but we can't carry it out. Remember Peter? He vowed never to forsake his Lord. And yet, when a young woman wondered whether he was a follower of Caesar or a follower of his master, Jesus Christ, he renounced Jesus Christ with vile oaths. He swore that he didn't even know the very one who he had previously announced as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Preservation of his own life overwhelmed his better intentions. And that's exactly what we face. It's what we experience in the cauldron of adversity. It is what we experience when we are tested. We might have correct inner beliefs, but so often we lack a full measure of the authentic Christian life. And because of that, we stumble in the moment of truth. How different our Lord, who is our master and our example. When the Pharisees and teachers of the law threatened to undo him, he exhibited an otherworldly calm, peace in the midst of the storm. And that peace is accessible to you and me as well. I would not have the temerity to say that on my own. But Jesus said, my peace I give to you. The words of Jesus highlight a glorious truth. The peace manifested by our Lord may be actualized in our very lives. Not by asking what Jesus would do in this or that circumstance, but by doing what Jesus did throughout the entirety of our lives. And that's exactly what I've been talking about. That's the role of living disciplines. That's what spiritual formation is all about. Imagine, now I happen to be a golfer, so if you're not, try to picture this with me, but imagine trying to hit a six iron out of a bunker to a green ominously guarded by sand and water like Tiger Woods once did. I watched him do it. I can promise you, force of will will not get the job done. Or imagine, maybe something that you're more familiar with if you're a Patriots fan. Imagine leading a fourth quarter game-winning drive like Tom Brady does year in and year out. He's like the ageless wonder. It doesn't happen by asking what Tiger or Tom would do. The only way to do what Tiger or Tom do in the heat of battle is to prepare for the moment of truth in the same way that they do. Now, they're doing it for something that's not going to last. If you're a Christian, you're going to do it for something that will last for all eternity. That's why Paul said, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Here, here, here's the bottom line. Willpower is insufficient to eradicate the layers of sin embodied in our lives. Living disciplines can do what the force of will by itself cannot. They are the means by which we may sow to the spirit instead of sowing to the sinful nature. The Apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament epistles. He took pains to explain that sowing to the sinful nature reaps ever 
escalating corruption. Sowing to the spirit produces life. And as I said earlier, not just life, but life that is life to the full, abundant life. You can experience that life, but just like physical exercises take some discipline, take some effort, so spiritual disciplines do as well. But the payoff is exactly what we were created for, and that is to experience life that is life to the full, the life that matters more that I wrote about in my book, Truth Matters, Life Matters More. That book, by the way, available through the Ministry of the Christian Research Institute. Uh, when you get the book through the ministry, all the proceeds go to the Ministry of the Christian Research Institute. Check it out on the web at equip.org. Truth Matters, Life Matters More, The Unexpected Beauty of an Authentic Christian Life. In this book, I talk about not only the disciplines, but I talk about the church as a Eucharistic um, assembly. And, and what I'm talking about is that the medicine of immortality is dispensed in the church. So that's uh, the subject of another series of videos. But for now, let me tell you that the life that matters more is critical. For my entire ministry, I've debated truth, defended truth, defined truth. But you want to go beyond that. You want to go beyond that to experiencing the living Lord of the universe, which is something that all of us as Christians can experience. And when we do, then we find out that we're experiencing the life that matters more. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you next time on another video series.